Welcome to Unlocking Your Truth, another podcast by Dr. Leslie Phillips. Welcome listeners, you are tuning in to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie. And we are broadcasting across the Fraser Valley on 101.7 FM from the unceded territory of the Stolo Nation. And of course, you can also catch us on the podcast from drlesliephillips.com and all the major podcasting platforms. If you are tuning in for the very first time, let me explain a little bit about Unlocking Your Truth. We're a talk show and we focus on subjects under the umbrella of metaphysics and spirituality. So every week we have a different topic and uh, this week, of course, is no exception. In fact, uh, we're going to touch upon a favorite topic of, of many of our listeners, which is angels and we have a fantastic guest and he is going to inspire us to a deeper understanding of how knowing our angels can help us with our life mission and fulfill our purpose so without further ado i'll introduce the guest his name is keith leon s and keith is a multiple international best-selling author he's a book publisher speaker singer songwriter and author as well and uh, his book that we're going to be talking about today is called walking with my angels a true story and keith has been on many popular radio and television broadcasts and his work has been covered in many well-known publications like the huffington post he's also spoken at events with some really high profile individuals in the self-help realm, including Jack Canfield, Bob Proctor, Neil Donald Walsh, Barbara DeAngelis, John Gray, Michael Beckwith, and Marianne Williamson. So that's quite the list. He's a member of the Evolutionary Business Council, and his greatest passion is to teach people how to go from their first thought to best to creating a bestseller, which he says is like having the world's greatest business card. So he loves introducing people to their heavenly helpers, and that's what we're going to invite him to do today. Welcome to the show, Keith. Thank you so much for having me. How are you today? I'm really well and uh, delighted to be making your acquaintance. Mm. So I, I want to ask you, because we're going to focus the show on angels what was your first experience with an angel how did you first connect with the angelic realm when i was a child i could hear my guardian angel's voice mm. and interesting because i was because i was young then then the voice uh wherever the angel was that's where i would hear the voice coming from but it was always outside of me so it could be floating up in the ceiling in the corner or right behind me to my left or right in front of me. So the voice would come from different places. I think that was to help me wrap my head around it as a child. Cause if it was in my head, I might've thought that I was making it up or something. Yeah. Uh, so this, this voice that I could hear as a child kept me out of harm's way, advised me, you know, told me to go left when I normally would go right and, and save my life, uh, kept me from being molested as a child. So many things. Oh, gosh, that's wonderful. And, um, you know, some of my first experience with angels were actually involving the music of the spheres, you know, the music of the angelic realm. Yeah. And I noticed that you're also a singer songwriter. And I, I'm just curious whether those early experiences also included music and whether you think there's a connection between the, the music that you create and uh, the divine music of the spheres yeah there's there's always been music in my life and as long as i could remember i could i could be in a, a outside where there's construction and the clanking and everything would sound like music to me i could hear a song in yeah. it so i had that since childhood 
And the reason that I love and continue to sing, even when I started speaking and stepping into other realms and other avenues, is because uh, when when I speak or when I sing, healing happens through my voice. And I just got that feedback for so many years before I made a connection. And so there's something about when I'm singing a song, playing music, or even speaking, where people have healing, no matter what I'm talking about. Even if I'm just talking about books that day, people will come up and say, I had a healing, and they'll put words on it. So very interesting. Music yeah. and, and my voice, there's a connection there. Yeah, very wonderful. And uh, one of the things that you mentioned just then, I think, is worth emphasizing a little bit, because it was my experience as well. And it relates to another subject that we get a lot of questions about, which is people hearing voices and what does that mean? And does it mean I'm crazy? And no, it doesn't. It just means that your clear audience is starting to activate and open up. And people often want to know, well, what, what is it like? And so it's great that you describe what your experience was like. And you know, my experience as well when it was first opening up was that, yes, you know, clanking, you know, other noises that are real noises. And somehow through that mask of other noises is this beautiful music um, or, or, or voices hiding in between those sounds. So that's a really cool description of what it can be like. And we'd also yeah. say, you know what, everyone has their own unique experience, don't they, as well? Um, yeah. Yeah, and the way that our angels show up for us is going to be different for everyone. And it's really, they're showing up the way that we will be able to wrap our minds around it. For, so for some people, if they felt like hearing a voice in their head would make them think they were crazy, then maybe the angels show up in a different way. Sometimes they show up physically for someone who would freak out about that, you know? Uh, or if you are uncomfortable and, and you're hearing the voice in your head, it, it, you you have to know that if, the voice is advising you to do things that are healthy and good for you and loving and kind, then that's an angel and, that, and that's fine. <laughs> yes, okay absolutely. But if they're not giving you uh, supportive messages, then that's some other kind of entity and uh, best not to listen to it really. Yeah. So um, I want to ask you more about your formative experiences, but something else popped into my head, which is exactly, you know, the angelic messages will appear in whatever form uh, speaks most to you. And I always remember my, my mom, when her father passed away, she'd, um, before she was told physically, she'd had a pot of tea, being an English lady, <laughs> and she poured the tea leaves down the sink and she looked in the sink and the tea leaves had formed the perfect image of an angel. Mm. And it was like, oh, and she knew the message was that her father had passed away. So, so somehow the connection was made. So that's just a, another example of uh, what it can be like to have yeah. a communication with an angel. Yes. And they can show up in you ask a question and the next song is the answer to the question that you just asked. Or somebody walks up to you that, that you don't even know and they just say a phrase and walk off and it's like that's what was the answer to the question you asked previous uh, or it's just somebody who comes up and tells you hello and that they see you on a day when you felt like you weren't seen yeah. you know all of these are, are evidence of that. yeah 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 wonderful so now I read about you that some of your earlier years were pretty uh, challenging and I'm assuming that your relationship with the angelic realm helped you through those challenging times. And I'm wondering if you can share some of that story, um, especially for our listeners who themselves are, you know, feeling at a, 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 at a low point and really calling out for help. Yeah. Well, first, my, my mother was manic depressive and mostly depressive. The manic mm. parts were fun, but they were not very often. <laughs> and, uh, you know, she was over the top fun on those days. But the depressive part was just she was not available to me. Yeah. And so I know that part of the, the reason that my angel came to me and, and made it self known so that I, I could get support that I was yeah. not getting from the, uh, my father. I had no father. He wasn't there. And my poor teenage sister was trying to raise me, but she was a teenage sister. So she's yeah. trying to do her own thing, not raise her little brother and didn't even know how to do that anyway. So I got a lot of support there. There was a time, uh, like I said, where, where uh, a man was, you know, trying to 
molest me around the corner from a church. And this angel told me exactly what to do, like just mm. scream, mom, 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 at the top of my lungs. And, and, then, uh, and then he ran off and then run home and tell your mom what happened. And, and there were just so many ways they showed up as a child. And then in my early 20s, I actually had uh, an earthbound angel come to me and, um, and prove to me that he was exactly that, mm. it, what he called a real earthbound angel. Because we, we call people that do good deeds, you know, for us, earthbound angels. But he wanted, me to, he wanted to be clear that earthbound angels were etheric angels who are now in a body and they're assigned to certain people. And they have to befriend those people and then get those people to trust them enough to be able to say who they are and why they're there. And in my case, that was to uh, teach me, to take me from believing in nothing to believing in everything. And then he also told me he would save my life at one point and reveal my life purpose to me. And once he had saved me, then I had to let him go. And so a lot of the book, my favorite part of the book is uh, all the stories of all the things that he had to do from taking me to in believing in nothing at that point in my early 20s uh, to believing in everything so that then I could step into my purpose. So, so he had to show me miracle after miracle after miracle because he'd show me a miracle on Monday and by Tuesday I'd be like, nah, you know, I made that up. It's all in my head. So, oh, that's amazing. And this was a real flesh and blood person in your life. Yes, yes, who spent about a year and a half with me uh, doing everything that he's from befriending me to getting to where he could tell me such a thing and then starting work day one with, uh, with teaching me. And ultimately revealing my purpose to me and saving my life and then he did as he said he had to move on and I had to let him go and that was really hard to do so what's the miracle that finally flipped the switch <laughs> which was <laughs> where I finally got it uh, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even remember which one specifically but uh, I just know each one of them I, I got a little more little more belief and then at one point I was just like wow I think I think it might have been like a day where I got to have uh, telekinetic powers like for mm. a whole day you know move just move things with my mind and that was always such a thing that I thought was made up like so much in my head thought that was the thing that was made up so being able to do it and seeing it before my eyes I think that's where finally I was like okay so he keeps saying there's more than the eyes can see well if this isn't proof of that I don't know mm. what it is. <laughs> well, that's, that's fantastic um I got one more question before we go to our first break and that was just when you were talking about your mom because so many people who are diagnosed with mental illness are also quite open psychically and I, I know your mom was because she had premonitions and so on and so forth yes. so it sounds like she was a believer in this stuff did that help you in any way yeah well it's fun she called it mother's intuition she just thought she just like got these thoughts and urges and then she would just say them and they would come true and she kind of would dismiss it after us oh it's just mother's intuition but really she was divinely connected and uh and even at first when i told her about my angel uh, she was like, oh, that's cute, you know, that's sweet. And that, but then I would, she, he would give me things to like prove it. So like he told me to tell her friends, this is in the 70s, to buy gold one day. Tell them buy gold because they were all making fun of me about my, my imaginary friend. So I said, my angel's telling me to buy gold. And in the 70s, there was this time where gold in America just spiked, like, like tripled or quadrupled in, in the, the amount it was worth. And it was like the day after he said that. And uh, so then they came back and were like, what else does your angel have to say? Because they, 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 they missed the boat. And, uh, and then I go, he says that you should have listened to me the first time. And they're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot oh. of those things finally got my mom on board. Where she was like, oh, okay, so he's not, there's no way he's making this stuff. No, he's not making it up. Well, listeners, you're tuning in to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie and my guest this evening, who is Keith Leon S. And we're having a delightful conversation about angels. We will be back after these few messages. Welcome back, listeners. You are tuning in to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie and this week's guest, 
Keith Leon S., who is the author of a book called Walking with My Angels, A True Story. And he is inspiring us today so that we can discover how knowing our own angels can help us with our life purpose and our passion and our mission here. And so now, what are some of the ways that angels have guided you, Keith? What are some of the ways that they've guided you that would be inspirational for our listeners to know about? Ah, oh, so many. Um, they have shown up for me to something as subtle as I, say, I take the same way home every night from work and then one day I'm told to go another way. <laughs> right? mm. I have just learned over the years to follow that because uh, I would take a left instead of a right and then I would hear the next day that there was a giant accident that way that I normally would go. Um, through again through messages in music I've heard um, I've again heard a lot of voices um, they've showed up for me in the flesh through that through the, yes yeah the angel uh, and you know this is a very vulnerable piece of work that I've written and and it even talks about drug addiction it talks about well, that's where I was going with because I'd read that um, you know, you talk about how angels can help with drug addiction and how angels can help with near-death experiences. Yeah. And so I just wonder if you can share whatever you're comfortable with sharing about, um, about that. If, and, and maybe it's to do with that chap that you were talking about. Yeah, well, there was, mm. there was a time when, uh, and you read about the book, in the book, that something just really really tragic happened and I was you know deep in drug addiction at that time and I just kind of flipped out and started running and uh, away from uh, my wife <laughs> who I had had an argument with and and I got to this freeway overpass and I was looking down at the cars whizzing by and I was like I could just jump over this mm. rail right now and this will all be over there was just so much pain that I was going through and that's ultimately what the addiction was was I didn't want to face all the things that I had grown up with that you'll read right about. I hadn't processed them. I didn't know how, and I didn't want to. So it was easier to just stuff those down uh, with, with, you know, using drugs. So, so I literally had a foot over to jump over that freeway overpass and a uh, man, and I'll put that in air quotes, uh, grabbed me and pulled me back. And I, you know, fell to the ground from pretty high up. And, and, uh, and I'm like, what, you know, what are you, he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, what do you think I'm doing? <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. up. And he's like, well, I can't let you do that. And then he said, you know, like, let me go over here to this bar that we could see and from there that I actually worked at and let me buy you a drink and you tell me your story. And if it's really that bad, then I'll let you jump, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and so I did, I told him the story. And then at one point I excused myself to go to the restroom and I was thinking about some of the things that he had said. And one of the phrases that he said was what a phrase that my angel who had been working with me the whole time had said over and over and over again. And I was like, wait a minute. And so I ran out to say, are you that angel mm -hmm. that showed up to me in another way? And he was gone. Wow. And, uh, and I knew that I was at a choice point right at that moment. I could either go to the door, turn left and go back to the freeway overpass or go right and go home. And what the last thing that he had left me was, was, you know, it seems to be that if an angel comes to you in the flesh <laughs> and says they're here to save your life, that maybe there's a purpose for you being on earth. And maybe you should consider that and stop thinking about yourself and think about others and who you're here to serve. And so ultimately, when I stepped out, I took a right instead of a left <laughs> of the door. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but it may not be that drastic for everybody. Um, what I teach people is when we have thoughts of suicide when we're extremely depressed like that it's there's this feeling of you're alone there's this feeling of a, i'm all alone nobody will care if i'm not here or nobody's helping me or you know you just feel alone how whatever words you put on it it's feeling alone is that feeling and and so the work that i do is teaching you that you're never alone like yeah. every one of us has at least one guardian angel that is with us all the time and they have two purposes one love us unconditionally and the second one is get us to our predetermined expiration date 
So because we're on, <laughs> yeah. on high watch, with all the moving parts and everything going on around us, they are on high watch trying to like make sure that we make it to that date. And when you hear something super incredible that happened, like mom lifts the car off baby, mm. you know, like, uh, and, or you were in a car and you just like swerved and missed an accident and you're like, there's no way I know how to drive. Yeah. One. All of those things are evidence of angels. Uh, and so those are the two jobs they have. If we want anything other than love us unconditionally and get us to our predetermined expiration date, anything other than that, we must ask because we have free will. Yeah. So we must ask. And that's why I love to teach people evocation. So, you know, close your eyes and say, ah, guardian angel, any angels that can hear my voice, you know, uh, I would love for you to show up in, in ways that I will know that it's you. Like, give me evidence that you're there. Show me signs. I'm inviting that. I'm telling you, it, bring it on, you know. If you want to talk to me as a voice, if you want to show up to me where I can see you, however you want to do that, let's do it. Let's do it. And make that your, your focus for a while. And do that every morning and think about it all throughout the day. And when you bring mm -hmm. that focus, it's like, uh, I'll date myself now, but remember the dials on the radio? You used to have to go over to the radio, us older people, and tune this dial back and forth, left and right. And, and it was really hard to get that thing to tune in. But once it did, you step back and you're like, don't touch the radio. It's perfect. Yeah. And yeah. once it was mean, though, it was crystal. And it sounded so good. But you had to work for it. And that's kind of like what this is like. When you put that attention on tuning in, you're turning that dial. Yeah. You, the evocation. Show, yeah. show up. Show the way. Yeah. And you're bringing a focus to it. Now you go out in the world and you see all the ways that they're showing up and have yeah. been up for you every day and you were just kind of missing it. Yeah, that's a good analogy, uh, the radio dial. So let's talk a little bit about your mission and purpose and how that was revealed to you. So I read that you were tuned into your purpose about 30 years ago, and then it took you a little bit of time to uh, bring that into manifestation. So maybe you can tell us about that journey, how you first understood why you were here, and, um, and how that has now manifested in the world. Ooh, it was amazing. Uh, while I was being taught and or trained, mentored by this angel, at one point he, uh, he was a mechanic. And so he gave me this little screwdriver that mechanics have mm -hmm. on their person at the time when they work. And he said, put this on your shirt before you go to bed and we're going to take a journey. And I'm like, okay, we're going to take a journey, whatever. So I <laughs> put it on my shirt and went to bed like he told me to. And the next thing I knew, I I was raising out of my body and flipped over and was looking at myself sleeping on the bed. And I was like more awake than ever. And I knew that any moment I could jump right back into my body, mm -hmm. but I knew it wasn't a dream because I could feel the difference. Like it was very clear. This is not yeah. a dream. This is amazing. I'm floating. And then my angel came and, and flew into the room and said, Hey, what do you think? And I'm like, this is awesome. And he's like, okay, you're ready for the journey. And I go, this isn't it. And he's like, oh, he laughs. He's like, no, this is not it. He goes, uh, you trust me? I said, yeah. He goes, well, come with me. And we kind of, we raised through the roof and out and uh, up high and flew over the town and out into the mountains, which weren't really that far away and came down to this campfire, this huge fire that was blazing, floated down to that. And then I, pulled up a seat and uh, and there were all these avatars, beings of light, ancestors, uh, Jesus was there uh, and they all told me my purpose and what I was here to do on earth. And so I received all of that information from them one at a time and then uh, we, he said, you're ready to go and we kind of reversed that process, flew up out over the city, back through the ceiling and then he said, all right, so I'll talk to you tomorrow and you can tell me about this. And so he, uh, he, he left. And then I just really uh, enjoyed watching myself sleep for a little bit and really for the first time ever saw the beauty in me, right? Mm -hmm. Felt that I am, that I am presence, like what that meant. And, uh, and then ultimately I jumped back in my body and then sat forward immediately and was like, wow, that was not a dream. So when I went to tell my angel the next day all about it, as if he wasn't there, but he mm. wanted to hear my words, how I would describe it, uh, I told him I can only remember what one of those 
beings told me. Only one. Why? I remember some of them and what they told me. I mean, that they told me something, but I don't remember what. Why can I only remember what one of them told me? And he said, you couldn't, at this point, you could not even wrap your mind around yeah. what they told you. And they yeah. revealed your whole purpose. And if you knew the whole thing all at once, you know, it'd be yeah. too, too big. You'd get big, big dream freak out and you'd lose it. So, yeah. uh, we, matter of fact, he said we'd be fitting you for a straight jacket and getting you some meds. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so he said though, what what that one told you is your next step, and so you do that. And then when you've achieved that fully, then you'll remember what the next one told you. And throughout your whole life, that will happen. You'll get flashes. You'll have dreams. You'll have memories of what each of them told you. And you'll, you'll be getting that until you're stepping fully into your purpose. So that's what's been happening for the last 30 years. I just received the next step and then I follow it. And I've been. So, yeah. I'm so curious what the first step was. Uh, back then, it was to fully believe and trust in not only the angel, but myself. And that I would, that I did have the power of uh, creation. Mm. Some people call co-creation. That my thoughts are things that my words do create. That that it does happen as I believe. You know, yeah. as I believe is how it's done. And I pray believing that I'll have and I'll receive. You know that that piece to really, really get clear that that's true. Because in order for me to teach it, I have to be a walking, talking demonstration of right. it for people. So that was for me to go to work on immediately uh, manifesting. And then we went you know, back to work with him and that was some of the things he was teaching me to do. So when did you first know that you were going to write? Uh, about 20 years ago when I, uh, I met the wonderful angel that is my wife now and uh she and i when we first first got into the relationship kind of told on ourselves about things that we had done in the past that didn't work and mm -hmm. one of them was communication for both of us yeah so that we were going to focus specifically on communication and make sure that that was top notch and so we uh we did we came we became really really clear communicators and uh, we would have these things that would come up and we would just do this kind of process and get through it really fast. And we did it in front of people like family members. And so many people said, Hey, what's that thing you guys do? What's that thing you do? And we're like, what thing? Cause we didn't even know we were doing it. Mm. They said the thing where like at our house, I'd be picking up something and throwing it at him, but you didn't. And you just said a few words and it was diffused and everything was great. And you guys appreciate each other. Like what, what's that about? So the next time we had an argument, um, uh, uh, she's my uh, girlfriend wife now said uh, hey you know do you mind if I go get a piece of paper and jot this down and I'm like whatever because <laughs> mm. we're in the middle of it right <laughs> whatever do what you want and so she did she wrote down uh, what we were going through and what we were saying and spe specifically what we were saying and we realized that we were following this kind of five-step exact format after we wrote it a few times so we created that uh, wrote it out and shared it with the people who had asked us, like our friends and family. Mm. And they all started using the tool and they were all having success with it. So then we thought if we have something that's like the holy grail of communication, <laughs> we probably should share that. And so I actually went to John Gray who wrote Men from Mars, Women are from Venus, the number one relationship guy. Yes, yeah, time, yeah. And asked him if he had endorsed us and he kind of chuckled. He's like, okay, I'm going to endorse your work, you know? So why would I do that? And, uh, which I thought was a legitimate question. And so I told him about that process and he was like, huh, well, I'll, I'll go check it out because the manuscript was in his office. I'll go look Monday. So he read the book on Monday and then to, that we had written and then Tuesday uh, he decided to endorse it. So, so we just knew that we had to write a book about it because we wanted to help others be able to communicate like we mm -hmm. did. And we also used the law of attraction to create a law of attraction to create each other. And that's before people were even calling it law of attraction. Yeah both done this very specific process. And so that's what's in the book also. We teach people how to how to manifest their perfect mate out of thin air and then how to communicate once you're mm. in. So, so that's your first book then? Yeah. yeah. What's the name of that one? Uh, it's called The Seven Steps to Successful Relationships. Okay. Because we have, I mean, the number one question people 
right in with is what's my purpose but the number two question is who's my soulmate or when am i going to manifest a relationship yeah. um, so it's it's definitely worth mentioning that yeah. well the second book i did was specifically about how to how to get clear on your life purpose mm. that, that's the book that changed everything for me like when I wrote that first book, you know, she and I probably sold 12, 12 copies. I didn't know how to sell, sell a book. We just had John Gray's endorsement and that's, that's all it did for me. <laughs> no it's idea. funny because you would think an endorsement by somebody famous like that would be like, oh, you yeah. know, everybody's going to buy it now. So that's interesting that you got right. that holy grail of somebody famous to endorse it and still right. it didn't. Everything is marketing. And if you don't know yeah. marketing, then forget it. It's just going to sit there and collect dust, which it did until the second book. Uh, which I got, you know, 10 people from the movie The Secret, Jack Canfield did the forward. I, I asked all the people I knew were living their purpose in life, uh, what what was their purpose? How did they discover it? So what led to that? Yeah. And what advice would they give other people searching for theirs? So did you, did you get their endorsement because you interviewed them about their life purpose or you just approached them without knowing them and I didn't know uh, I didn't know but one of them. <laughs> yeah. But but that was another thing I was asked I was doing I was asking working with angels and I mm. was uh, doing what I call sit ask and listen. And yeah. This is another thing that I teach. You know, we're sitting meditating. A lot of us are asking a lot of questions, but when do we really sit long enough to receive the answer? Yeah. So I did a whole book project like that. I throw away what I thought I needed to do that day, and then I would have one question, and I would say. I would ask that question and I wouldn't move until I got the answer. One time I waited two weeks, two weeks for one answer. But when I got the answer, it was how to ask all of those people how to be in my book in a way that they would say yes. And after I got that process, which there's no way it was from my head, I, there, I could not have thought about it, created that process myself, uh, but it downloaded in its entirety. And then I just did it and I asked 80 people to be in, in the book to interview yeah. them in the book, all of them famous, got 68 yeses, 12 no's, and 10 of the 12 were the publicist, not the actual person who yeah. said no. So only two no's out of 80 asks, and that was just because those two people were the kind of people who don't share that freely their yeah. with, their, yeah. with their people. And so if you really looked at it, it was like 80 out of 80. You know, that was just, those two are just not a match, right? <laughs> so. Mm. Uh, so if, if, if with that closing ratio, right, and anything else would be like, what? Are you kidding me? That's so, amazing. Yeah. So that's the, the power of angels and, and really listening for the answer, taking the time to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. We're going to go to another break now. So listeners, you're tuning in to Unlocking Your Truth. This is Dr. Leslie, and I'm interviewing our guest this evening, who is Keith Leon S. We're talking about angels. We're talking about manifestation. And we're talking about life purpose and life mission. And when we come back, maybe we'll move into talking about does everyone have a book inside them? Keith's been talking about his books. <laughs> um, I'm sure there are lots of the uh, lots of you listeners who are who feel like you have a book inside you. So um, we'll be back after this short break. Welcome back, listeners. You're tuning in to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie and. Today's show is about how knowing your angels can help with your life mission and your life purpose. And so let's sort of delve into that a little bit more and also talk about the other side of what you do, which is actually coaching people to write books. And, and so maybe you can explain a little bit about um, the bridge or connection between all of this stuff about angels and all of this stuff about writing books. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that was part of the purpose that was revealed to me. First mm. was, you know, write that book so that we could share the relationship tool. Then it was help people discover their purpose and, and reach out to all these mentors. They became mentors, all these, you know, people that had a list of a hundred thousand people and more. Mm. And that's, why that book was completely different was when when who do you think you are discover the purpose of your life launched 1.2 million emails went out from 
all of the teachers in the book saying, hey, buy the book today and you get $1,800 worth of free stuff from us, including tickets to our events and all, everything. So it was a no brainer for everybody to say, well, of course, <laughs> I'll get mm. that. And so, uh, so I went from, you know, to, from first book, like I said, 12 copies to huge international bestseller. And on the front page of Amazon, before they started doing all the subcategory thing, uh, so I have all the books in the world. I was right underneath Eckhart Tolle's book about life purpose, which Oprah, two weeks before the launch, held up his book and made it the topic of the world. So yes. So people people searched on his book and saw your book immediately below it, which is yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, and then they have that thing like ten dollars more and you get free shipping. Or if you like that book from Keith, you'll like this. And what happened was that Seven Steps book that we had sold twelve of, right? Uh, that was getting recommended, and so so many people bought that that it moved up and was right underneath. Uh, yeah. Our, with the Think You Are book on the front page of Amazon on the best uh, main bestseller list of all the books in the world. So we had two bestsellers at one time, and they were up there for weeks. It was amazing. Yeah, it's, it's very cool. So, so actually, one question, just for my own curiosity, is: so that that it, it sounds to me like the formula was basically um, approaching them to be interviewed on a topic, so that they would be quoted in the book, and then that would want to make help them help market the book so so that then that sounds like a very original thing to have done and now it's something that is done Everybody, a lot yeah. and I, I wonder whether it would work today <laughs> because they must be approached by thousands of people nowadays with that right. same suggestion yeah it would be a heck of a lot harder to get them to say yes now yeah and that's that's the thing is uh it really, there was me and like one other person that was even doing that kind of book then, like at all. So, so it was new. And the, and the few that they had done, sometimes they weren't really, they were kind of self-published and they didn't come out beautiful. So what mm -hmm. happened was when our book came out, I got calls from so many of them saying, thank you. Like I've got this book in my hand and I'm so proud of it. It's so beautiful and it's laid out well. Thank you for representing me. You know, like I loved you and I said yes, but I was praying and hoping it would be high quality like this. Uh, so all of that was in alignment with my, my purpose. And what I was told later was then, you know, then I stepped into helping other people to write their books. And I did that right. for years. That was kind of like herding cats because not a lot of people will actually take the time and do all the things that they would need to do to finish a book. You know, they'll yeah. just be writing for years and years and it'll never get finished. Yeah. So I did that for years and got some people, you know, like I'd say at least a few thousand over the years to write their books, yay. Uh, and then there's probably another eight that never finished it. That's just how it is with, with books. Mm. And then that led us, my wife and I, to think, well then how could we make it so easy that somebody could have a book without having to write a single word? And that's where we created the You Speak It book process. So we have a process oh. now. Where what we have to do is show up to seven phone calls and we will pick your brain in a very specific way to get all the information from you that, and then take that information and create a book for you. And your total commitment is eight hours of time. And uh, you just, if you can carve, eight, carve out eight hours, we can have a book for you that, that you'll be proud of to call your own high quality and, uh, and it will represent you and your, your mission and your message. Yeah. So all of that was to make it so that when this book about angels came out, that all of those partners from the Who Do You Think You Are book, the thousands mm -hmm. of people who I helped write a book and the people who had spoke the book, when I asked all of those people, will you share about this angel book coming out? Everybody was yes. And yeah. so that's why millions and millions of people heard about this book when it came out, which is just amazing. And all of that was part of the plan because this book is, I've, the angel book I was told I would write over 30 years ago. Uh, around that campfire I would write a book called walking with my angels and it would be my story and ultimately uh, it would be about raising the vibration of the planet and I was told that every person that holds a book in their hands will be raised to their next level of vibration yeah that's very beautiful and you know exactly some of the best spiritual books it, it, it's vibrational isn't it yeah. you know you walk past the bookshelf you don't even read the title but the energy in the book True. is just uh, you know so high that it, it if if you're at the right time right place to have that book you notice it 
Um, so that's, that's wonderful. So I'm interested in um, inspiring and helping our listeners to go to their next step. So under the umbrella of the conversation that we're having, how can we do that? Mm. Well, if you're listening and you're ready right now, and if you're driving, you know, don't close your eyes, just listen. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, right now we can just close our eyes and take a nice easy breath and let that go. Take one more nice easy breath, letting go of anything that happened before this now moment right now. And just know that you are being heard right now by your guardian angel. As I said, we all have one. And so right now, you can simply repeat after me and say, Dear guardian angel, I know that you are here for me and have kept me out of harm's way. And I would love to see evidence of you. I am open to hear your voice. If you want to show up for me where I can see you. I'm open for that too. If you want to come to me through music or through the words of other people, however you want to show up for me, I want you to know that I am open. I am willing. I'm excited. And I look forward to seeing the evidence that you're here for me. I thank you in advance for showing up for me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so it is. And amen if you're an amen person like me. <laughs> thank you so much. And that was an invocation, wasn't it? Inviting yes. your guardian angel to come and, uh, and show themselves. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, and very wonderful it was. Yeah, and you've, you've, you've done it once and that may work. You may want to get up tomorrow and do it again or do it every time you think about it uh, and to, because it's going to remind you to keep an eye out for it because you, you will see the evidence. It's just will you remember 10 minutes later, later when you get up and walk out the door? <laughs> well, that's the thing, isn't it? You know, yeah. I mean, I, I met my, I mean, what I might call my guardian angel many, 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 many years ago. I don't always remember to talk to my guardian angel every day because I'm, I have so many spirit guides and uh, I have a big, huge team that I talk to. Yeah. And so that was really special for me because, of course, it's like, oh, yes, <laughs> there you are. Oh, my goodness. You know, gosh, I'm so sorry I haven't thought about you in a while so um thank you for reacquainting me with my guardian angel as well um no that was really really lovely and um and very 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 impactful and it's funny it reminds me of when i first met my guardian angel and um i was it was when i lived in england i live in canada now and i i was um I guess doing an English pastime, it was the weekend and it was a sunny day and I went to the local park and I was just lying on the grass, you know, reading a book, you know, and um, I started writing a poem. And um, the poem was an introduction of my guardian angel to me. <laughs> and it was something like, I trust my intuition, I trust my guiding forces, my angel with the guiding eye, the guiding eye of Horus. I trust in you to teach me to um, lead me through the age. I trust it. Oh, that I have forgotten the second verse, but I, it was like, I'll trust in you to teach me, to guide me through the pages, to take me to the stars and back and lead me through the ages. Mm. And so my guardian angel is one that spans multiple lifetimes, not just this lifetime, you know, and it was sort of like a testament to that, 
ancient, well-established relationship. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my wife and I are twin flames, and so we're really one one entity split into two, and we've been doing that for years and years and years and being in a relationship together for lifetime after lifetime. And, um, and we just knew that when we met, so we're just we're really enjoying the process here and it's interesting <laughs> you know when you're, <laughs> when you're when you're so so alike um, in so many ways you know things could really come up so we uh especially in the beginning we had plenty of opportunities to use that communication tool that we <laughs> well i was gonna <laughs> say we, because yeah. you know a true sort of soulmate relationship where you're both aspects of the same soul it's like looking in the mirror every day and so you have to do your work because if you don't do your work every day is like ah <laughs> you know um you know and, it, and 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 soulmate relationships can just be highly volatile because and highly challenging because if if both of you aren't at that you know point then um, there's a lot of projection going on um, and a lot of denial going yeah. on and a lot of fear going on and so you know pe people who, who 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 write the question who is my soulmate they have this image that you know hearts and flowers and uh, it will solve all of my problems if if i can only meet my soulmate every problem i have in my life will just instantly disappear in a puff of smoke and every and i'll be saved and um that's certainly not my concept of it at all <laughs> oh but if that were true <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, yeah. so, so so you would you would validate that would you that to be in a relationship with with a, another body personality that emanates from the same soul it basically what it is is that the soul is interested in growth and expansion and that's like one of the most uh, highest opportunities for maximum growth and expansion be in a relationship with yourself <laughs> in a different body <laughs> so so Keith it sort of um, occurs to me that you're helping people uh, write books in a way that pertain to their life purpose. And our guardian angel is intricately connected with guiding us on our life purpose. And so that process of um, helping somebody give birth in their own consciousness to who they are and why they're here is something that is um, involves working with your angels would you say that's true yeah and it really is involves all the work that i do <laughs> it seems like every every book that i have written has been to help you do that and even when we help people to write their books that process the you speak it process takes you from your thinking mind into your knowing mind so when i say thinking i have my hand on my head and when i say knowing i have my hand on my heart right so that yeah. the experience of that and what we do at the very beginning of every call pulls you from the part of like oh what's this book going to be about i don't know and all the things that kept you from writing a book in the first place to pull you down to the part of you that already knows what the book is and knows exactly what to say and how to say it mm. and uh, taps you into that and then we capture that and turn it into yeah. a book for you so yeah I think, it's just all energy yeah i mean i i, I think one of the biggest blocks that people have to um, connecting with their angels, connecting with their intuition is the intellectual mind. And we're so trained to operate from the intellectual mind. And the intellectual mind is part of the, the machine that is the body and not who you are as spirit. And I, I also, you know, I can see how uh, what you're talking about is, is essential in, in, um, giving birth to a book have, having written a couple of books myself you know it's like bypassing the intellect and getting that uh divine stream of consciousness to flow and i, I often i i went once to a, a book conference and um there's, there's all these workshops where they're teaching people how to write and there's so many books 
uh, uh, rules about how you're supposed to write a book and what you're supposed to put in the first chapter and the second chapter and all of that. It doesn't surprise me uh, that there are so many people who have a passion to write a book and never finishing write, finish writing the book because they just spend all their time trying to perfect it. Um, in accordance with the rules that are dished out to them, that someone who's training them from their intellectual mind. Yes, yes. I like to say the only good book is one I can hold in my hand and read because it's finished. <laughs> and, yeah. you, and, the per and the perfect book doesn't exist because if it's typo-free, then it most likely had seven different editors on it and just got so edited and edited that it no longer has the soul of the author in the book. Yeah. If you find a typo here and there, but you can't put that book down for anything, <laughs> you could not put it down. You have to read under the blankets with a flashlight, trying not to keep your mate up. Like that book is a book where, where they just kind of freeform wrote it and, and then said to one editor, you know, here, go, you know, clean it up. And then, but don't change my voice, you know, and, uh, and the editor honored him in that, you know, that's the difference yeah. between those two books uh, edited to death. It doesn't really have the soul of the author and that kind of book you can put down and go to an appointment and come back later exactly. <laughs> it's the opposite of the other one that you can't put down at all the other thing that occurs to me is we are all evolving and so what you or i put down in a book today check in yeah. with us 10 years later it was a moment in our evolution and there are people out there in the world where that moment in our evolution speaks to a moment in their evolution you know, yeah. and so if you if you if you if you keep constantly working at it, you will never be finished yes. because you're evolving. And so it's more about yeah. ca capturing that particular. Yes, you capture that. You create the book outline in that one moment when you say it's time to create this book. And then I say after you've completed that outline then that's it. The gate goes up and any other so-called brilliant idea is called the next book. <laughs> keep that on another sheet of paper over there for the next book because you'll just keep adding forever and ever and never finish if you, if you don't just call it. That's this but, book. This is now I'm yeah. going to write that. <laughs> Anything else that comes in, that's book number two. <laughs> exactly. So, Keith, it's been an absolute delight to have you on the show and I've enjoyed every moment of it. For our, for our listeners, either um, because they're interested in finding out more about angels and reading your book about angels, yeah. um, or because they're interested in writing their own book, how do they get hold of you? Well, for the book, go to Walking with, with My Angels book.com. So walkingwithmyangelsbook.com. And on that page, you will be able to go off to Amazon and get the book however you like. So come back and put the order number in and you'll get over $1,600 worth of free stuff from, from my friends, the people that you heard about, uh, a lot of people. And, and these are like support tools to help you while you're reading the book and with what you learn from the book. And so instead of just getting the book, you get all of these great tools as well uh, at no charge. So you might as well go there to walkingwithmyangelsbook.com and just grab a copy there. Uh, and then to uh, look at the You Speak It book program, if you go to uh, beyondbeliefpublishing.com, beyondbeliefpublishing.com, uh, you'll find out everything about... Uh, about this book and other books that I've done and the You Speak It book program, uh, or you just Google Keith Leon S. You'll, you'll find all kinds of things there. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Keith. Listeners, you've been tuning into Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie. We've been talking about how our angels support us in so many things, including our creative process, um, the ability to manifest our lives and specifically write a book if that's what we'd like to do uh we we'll be here next week same time seven o'clock pacific time on 101.7 fm broadcasting across the fraser valley
Thank you for joining us. You've been listening to another Unlocking Your Truth podcast by Dr. Leslie Phillips. For more information, go to her website at drleslyphillip p h i l l i p s dot com. That's drlesliephillips.com where you can ask questions or send her an email. And there's many free gifts on there for you as well. You can also find the questions that were asked during this show at the website on our free card reading podcast page, where you'll find a full list of them. Come back again.